Today I am going to talk about chapter 3 in the Economic Evolution Service, which is the title of Transformation to a Central Planned Economy under the period of the President Gamal Abdel Nasser. Chapter Outline During this chapter, we will talk about six items. The first, about the agricultural reform policy, then, nationalization of private sector companies. Third point will be about price controls. Then, fourth point, an active industrialization strategy. The fifth point is about human development and social welfare policy. The last point will be about the war economy. There were two forms of land holding in Egypt under that period. First, the direct owner, which means the farmer cultivates his own land. Second one with land tenants. The farmers cultivate the land and pay the affixed rent to land owners. That reform law affected both types of land holding. Agricultural Reform Law The law number 178 issued in 1952 was to achieve more equity in the distribution of agricultural land ownership, where the ownership was limited to just 200 fadan pain owner, then, then, then that ownership was decreased to just 50 fadan per person and 100 fadan per family. Excess land above the legal minimum limit was redistributed to the other farmers and the original land owners were compensated with long-term government bond. The purpose and the main target of that reform is to achieve was to achieve more equity in the land ownership and also was to eliminate economic power and gain popular support. Now the question is was the agrarian reform successful or no? To answer that question we have to discuss and mention the objectives of the policy and its impact. According to the objective to that reform policy was two main objectives. First was to redistribute of the agricultural land, where the land was redistributed from la large landholders to the small landholders. But improvement in the land distribution benefit only small holding, where the land distribution remained highly unpensed. The second objective achieved by that policy was to reduce the political power through eliminating the power of large landholders. On the other side, there were unintended negative effects for that law. First, there was a decline in agricultural productivity due to the fragmentation of agricultural land, where small farmers were unable to use advanced equipment and technology because they don't enjoy economics of scale. The second point, the law distorted the relationship between the land tenant and the land owner. The second point here in our chapter about nationalization of private establishments. There was a first wave of nationalization concentrated on foreign banks and insurance companies. In 1960, National Bank and Bank Master were nationalized, as Egypt during that period don't have still have central bank. So National Bank played the role of a central bank and Bank Master was the largest private commercial bank. Gradually, all other private banks and insurance companies were also nationalized. The state closed down the Alexandria Cotton Futures Market, established the Cotton Authority, which monopolized the purchase of cotton and nationalized the remaining internal and external trade company. The nationalization policies proceeded to include most of the manufacturing companies. Nationalization of private establishments. As a result of that nationalization process, 
private sector was allowed to own just 25 of the export trade and 75 on the international trade, while the public sector dominating the economic life and was responsible for 90% of Egypt's land capital formation. Third point in our chapter is about price controls. During the period of President Kamal Abdel Nasser, price ceiling was applied on agriculture and manufacturing products and also in the housing market. Price controls were used as an economic tool to decrease inflation, achieve social purpose and sustain popular political support. Through maximum prices were determined by the government for agriculture product, manufacturing products and housing. This advantage of price control policy that policies applied had some negative impact. From that negative impact was distorted the allocation of resources leading to lower supply, higher demand and creating shortage. Rationing coupons are usually distributed to limit the quantity each person or family receive, which resulted in long lines not suitable for versus consumer needs create incentives for various forms of corruption. Results in black markets where goods are sold at a price even higher than the free market price. Additional cost of bureaucracy. The private sector might respond to price ceiling by reducing the quantity and or the quality of the goods and services produced. Also, price control policy were applied in the housing market, where rent control laws were issued to reduce the rent several times in 1952 and 1965. In 1961, law number 46 established technical committees to determine rental value based on initial land value and the construction cost. The aim of the policy was to gain popular support. Disadvantage of rent to control. Rent to control policy resulted in some negative impacts. First, the private investment in rental housing decreased. This led to a decrease in the rental housing supply and created a shortage in the housing market. Also, the old the old tenants also suffered because the landlords didn't provide the necessary maintenance for the rented property. Some landlords slipped into poverty. The housing problem had other negative effects such as increasing the urban traffic problem and the building on agricultural land, and increasing speculation in land prices. The first point is an inactive industrialization strategy. Egypt's industrialization strategy. First step was to secure power supply for Egypt's manufacturing sector through building of Aswan High Dam. Industrialization plans relied on the public sector through the massive nationalizations of large manufacturing companies. Industrialization efforts were mainly financed by Egypt's agricultural surplus through agriculture exports as a source of foreign exchange to finance industries' imports needs, providing raw materials for manufacturing. Government adopted an import substitution strategy that focusing on replacing foreign imports with Egyptian products. Although the offered were to power them, the industrial base with diversified industries such as iron and steel. The industrialization strategy applied in Egypt has some positive impact and negative impact. Through the positive impact achieved by that strategy, that the value of industrial production had increased by more than 300%. Egypt has a relatively diverse industrial base, but According to the problems faced by 
that strategy that most of the project were based on an inverse substitution strategy low labor productivity due to the poor training breakdown due to the power cut high logistic and transportation costs due to the poor planning of the factory location inefficient scale of production due to the heavy and capital intensive industrial which required large scale production lack of backward linkage with the feeding industries lack of financial resources for capital investment and replacement of obscure machinery the fifth point our chapter human development and social welfare policy during that period the number of students enrolled increased as the expanse of higher classroom density where free education was available for all students health care expenditure increased the number of hospital beds access to subsidized medicines and health care service a clear direction toward reducing the rate of population growth family planning and birth control services labor legislation that granted workers more right but all of that led to an, an inefficient labor market last point in the chapter about the war economy for spirit from 1967 to 1973 the 1967 war with israel had a negative effect on the egyptian economy where three important sources of foreign currency were completely cut off burden on egypt or burden on egypt's budget expenditure increased due to the raising military cost egyptian economy suffered from a raising trade deficit due to the costly import substitution strategy after 1967 egypt relied on assistance from the arab countries loan agreement with the soviet union and withdrawals from the foreign country reserves